Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today, we talk about a somewhat delicate but very important topic, the people we shouldn't help. Helping others is certainly a positive thing, but sometimes, for our own well-being and for the good of others, we must be able to say no. So here are eight types of people it's best not to help. You will be surprised by the last one. So stay with us until the end to find out how to recognize them and how to handle these situations. 1. The Manipulators The first type of person we shouldn't help is the manipulator. These people are skilled at making us feel guilty or obligated to do what they want. They use emotions and situations to their advantage, often taking advantage of our kindness. Manipulators can be very convincing and skilled at distorting reality to make us feel responsible for their problems or to make us believe that we are the only ones capable of solving them. Manipulation can manifest itself in various ways. Some people may use guilt, others may leverage our desire to be useful and appreciated, while still others may use veiled or overtly direct threats. These tactics can lead us to do things against our will or compromise our personal values and needs. Helping a manipulator not only harms ourselves, but also reinforces their negative behaviors, allowing them to continue manipulating other people. It is important to learn to recognize the signs of manipulation. If we constantly feel pressured, if we are asked to do things that make us feel uncomfortable, or if we notice that the relationship is one way, it is likely that we are dealing with a manipulator. Setting clear boundaries is essential to protecting ourselves. We must be firm in saying no when something doesn't feel right and not give in to emotional pressure. It's also helpful to seek support from trusted friends or professionals if we feel overwhelmed. Let us remember that helping others should be an act of mutual generosity, not an obligation imposed through manipulation. Two, the lazy, lazy people are those who do not want to make the effort necessary to improve their situation. They prefer to have someone else do the work for them, relying on others to solve problems and address challenges that they could handle themselves. These people tend to always find excuses for not taking action and often complain about their circumstances without ever doing anything to change them. Helping the lazy can lead us to do more than we should and feel exploited. When we constantly find ourselves solving their problems, we are actually preventing them from developing the skills and confidence needed to deal with difficulties independently. Furthermore, we can easily become their crutch, perpetuating a cycle of dependency and inaction. It is important to recognize when our help is not appreciated or when it is taken for granted. If we notice that a person is not making any steps towards autonomy despite our efforts, it may be time to reconsider our involvement. We must encourage independence, encouraging these people to take initiative and do what is necessary to improve their situation. An effective way to do this is to set clear boundaries. For example, we can offer initial assistance, but then let them complete the task. In this way, we show that we are willing to help, but only if there is a real commitment on their part. It is also helpful to remember that we cannot change others. We can only provide tools and support but the motivation and will to change must come from themselves. In conclusion, helping the lazy without any reciprocity not only exhausts us, but also prevents them from growing and becoming more independent. We therefore encourage autonomy and self-sufficiency, maintaining a healthy balance between support and empowerment. 3. The ungrateful, ungrateful people are people who never appreciate what they receive and seem to have a black hole instead of a heart. No matter how much we do for them, they never seem satisfied and never show gratitude. According to psychology, those with low self-esteem tend to be less grateful as they may not feel worthy of the kind gestures or attention of others. This attitude can be extremely frustrating and demotivating for those trying to offer their help in a genuine way. Richard Branson, a successful entrepreneur, recommends treating relationships like your best customers emphasizing the importance of gratitude. Gratitude must be cultivated like a plant. It needs attention, care, and constant recognition to grow. When we realize that someone is abusing our kindness, it is essential to set limits. 
This not only protects our emotional well-being, but also helps ungrateful people reflect on their actions and perhaps change their behavior. Confusing ingratitude with constructive honesty can be a mistake. Constructive honesty involves positive, helpful feedback, while ingratitude manifests itself through a failure to appreciate even the smallest gestures of kindness. It is important to know how to distinguish between the two so as not to be unfairly discouraged. Cultivating gratitude in relationships strengthens bonds and increases the happiness of both parties. When we are grateful, we recognize the value of others and what they do for us, creating a positive cycle of mutual respect and appreciation. Instead of wasting energy on people who don't know how to appreciate us, it is wiser to invest our time and resources in relationships that enrich and support us. In conclusion, recognizing and distancing ourselves from ungrateful people is essential to maintaining our emotional balance and dedicating our energies to those who really deserve them. Let's cultivate gratitude in our lives and relationships to live more harmoniously and satisfyingly. 4. The Victimists People who always see themselves as victims are especially difficult to help. This victim mentality leads them to believe that they are helpless in the face of life's difficulties, constantly waiting for someone else to solve their problems. Often these individuals tell stories of doom and gloom to elicit sympathy and gain attention, but rarely actively seek solutions to improve their situation. Helping a victim may seem like an act of kindness and generosity, but in reality, it risks reinforcing their victim mentality. Every time we intervene to solve their problem, we confirm their belief that they are not able to face life alone. This vicious cycle keeps them stuck in a state of dependence and helplessness, preventing them from developing the skills and confidence needed to overcome difficulties. It is crucial to recognize when our help is doing more harm than good. Instead of solving their problems, we can encourage victims to take charge of their lives and find solutions on their own. This approach may initially be met with resistance, as it involves stepping out of the comfort zone and facing personal responsibilities. However, it is only through this process that they can grow into more resilient and independent individuals. We can offer emotional support and encouragement but it's important to set clear boundaries. For example, we can listen to their concerns and then ask what they think they can do to improve the situation. We can suggest resources or strategies, but we leave it up to them to put them into practice. In this way, we help them develop a sense of empowerment and personal responsibility. In conclusion, while it may be difficult to resist the urge to help a victimizer, it is essential to do so for their long-term good encouraging them to take charge of their lives and find solutions to their problems will not only help them grow but will also free us from the burden of constantly having to solve their difficulties only in this way can we promote positive and lasting change in their lives five the perpetual critics perpetual critics are individuals who always find fault with everything be it people situations or ideas these people use criticism as a tool of control or sometimes as a projection of their own insecurities. Their incessant criticism is never constructive and can erode the self-esteem of those who receive it, often being destructive rather than helpful. Dealing with perpetual critics requires a certain amount of emotional resilience. It is essential not to take their criticism personally, understanding that their need to continually criticize reflects their insecurities more than our shortcomings. Maintaining a balanced perspective helps us not to be negatively influenced by their comments. Establishing clear boundaries is another key step. We must be assertive in protecting our emotional well-being by limiting exposure to unconstructive criticism. This may mean avoiding discussions with these people about topics that we know are sensitive or that tend to trigger their criticism. When we are inevitably faced with their criticism, we can try to steer the conversation towards positive aspects or constructive solutions. For example, if a perpetual critic constantly complains about a project at work, we might respond with questions that encourage him or her 
to propose practical solutions instead of focusing on the problems. This approach not only reduces the negative impact of their criticism, but can also help them develop a more proactive and less destructive mindset. Finally, it helps to surround ourselves with people who provide constructive feedback and positive support. These relationships balance the negative influence of perpetual critics, strengthening our self-esteem and promoting a more positive and constructive view of reality. In summary, while perpetual critics can be difficult to deal with, the key is to not allow their words to negatively affect us. Setting boundaries, maintaining a balanced perspective, and trying to steer conversations toward positives or constructive solutions are effective strategies for mitigating their negative impact and protecting our emotional well-being. 6. The Irresponsible The irresponsible are individuals who live as if the consequences of their actions did not exist, placing blame on others and shirking commitments. This type of behavior can be extremely frustrating for those who try to help them, as they often end up trapped in an unproductive and demotivating cycle. Helping an irresponsible person without adopting a targeted approach can, in fact, be counterproductive. It is essential to invite them to reflect on their actions and become aware of the consequences. For example, if an irresponsible person doesn't pay their bills and expects someone else to do it for them, it's important to make them understand that this behavior is not sustainable in the long term and that they need to take responsibility for their own finances. Education and the ability to take responsibility are crucial for change. In this sense, rather than solving their problems, we should encourage them to find solutions themselves. For example, we can suggest tools and methods for managing time and resources, such as using calendars and budgets. However, we must be ready to accept that change only happens if the person himself is willing to put in the effort. Dealing with irresponsible people requires patience and self-control. It's easy to fall into the trap of wanting to solve all their problems, but it's crucial to remember that everyone must learn from their mistakes. Often the best solution is not to get too involved in their problems. Maintaining an emotional and practical distance that allows them to face the consequences of their actions. In conclusion, helping an irresponsible person is a complex task that requires a careful and strategic approach. Inviting reflection, promoting education, and personal responsibility are essential steps. However, it is also important to protect our well-being, avoiding being dragged into a cycle of irresponsibility that does not lead to any positive results. Seven. Narcissists. Narcissists are people who are extremely focused on themselves and their ego. These individuals believe that the world revolves around them and often do not show empathy towards others. Their lack of consideration for the feelings and needs of others makes them particularly difficult to manage, especially when trying to offer help. Helping a narcissist can mean further feeding their ego and ignoring our needs. For example, if a narcissist constantly asks for our emotional support without ever offering it in return, we risk becoming emotionally exhausted. Their tendency to manipulate and exploit those around them to gain attention and admiration can create toxic dynamics in relationships. Recognizing narcissistic behaviors is essential to protecting our emotional well-being. These behaviors can include constantly seeking praise, a lack of empathy, an inability to accept criticism and a tendency to gaslight or make us doubt our perception of reality. Knowing how to identify these signals allows us to establish clear limits. It's important to avoid falling into the trap of trying to please a narcissist or expecting them to change for us. Rather, we should focus on how to protect ourselves. This may mean limiting contact with them or setting strict boundaries in interactions. For example, we can choose not to respond to requests that seem unfair or excessive and not to allow them to negatively affect our self-esteem. Additionally, cultivating healthy relationships with people who show empathy and mutual respect can help us maintain emotional balance. Awareness of our rights and needs is crucial when dealing with a narcissist. Learning to say no without feeling guilty is a crucial skill to avoid being overwhelmed by their requests. 
In conclusion, narcissists can be particularly challenging to help due to their self-focus and lack of empathy. Protecting our emotional well-being requires recognizing narcissistic behaviors, setting clear boundaries, and cultivating healthy relationships. Only in this way can we avoid being sucked into the vortex of their ego and maintain our emotional balance. 8. The Opportunists Opportunists are people who exploit the resources and generosity of others without offering anything in return. Lack of reciprocity is a key sign to identify them. These individuals are skilled at manipulating with subtle flattery and vague promises to get what they want without ever intending to return the favor. Often, they present themselves as friendly and helpful, but their real purpose is to take advantage of the situations and people around them. Establishing clear boundaries and promoting reciprocity is essential when dealing with opportunists. It's important to be aware of warning signs, such as frequent requests for help, but never offering anything in return, or behaviors that indicate a lack of empathy. Studies indicate that opportunists combine low empathy and high opportunism, making them particularly adept at manipulating situations in their favor without worrying about the consequences for others. Defending yourself from opportunists involves being aware of your resources and setting clear expectations from the start. For example, when someone asks for help, we can gently but firmly set the limits of what we are willing to offer and ask for reciprocity. If we notice that a person tends to exploit our generosity without ever returning the favor, it is important to have the courage to face the situation and, if necessary, reduce our involvement. Another crucial aspect is self-awareness. Knowing our values and priorities helps us recognize when someone is trying to manipulate us for personal gain. We can take a more assertive approach in our interactions, clearly asking what the other person is willing to offer in exchange for our help. This not only protects our resources, but also teaches opportunists that we are not willing to be exploited. Finally, it's important to surround yourself with people who show genuine reciprocity and respect. Cultivating relationships based on trust and mutual assistance helps us create an environment in which opportunists find it more difficult to thrive. Strengthening our social networks with individuals who share our values and our vision of reciprocity protects us from the negative effects of opportunistic behavior. In conclusion, opportunists can pose a significant challenge, but with awareness, clear boundaries, and a commitment to reciprocity, we can effectively defend ourselves. Recognizing and addressing opportunistic behavior allows us to maintain our integrity and resources, promoting healthier and more balanced relationships. So here are the eight types of people it's best not to help. Remember, helping others is important, but we must also protect ourselves and our well-being. Recognizing these behaviors and knowing how to say no is an act of wisdom and love for ourselves. It is essential to learn to establish healthy boundaries in relationships so that we can maintain a balance between giving and receiving without compromising our happiness and mental health. Thank you for watching the video and for your attention to these crucial issues. If the content has interested you and you find value in the information shared, we warmly invite you to subscribe to our channel, Balance Journey. By clicking on like and sharing the video, you can help spread these precious reflections with other people interested in personal growth and relational well-being. Please feel free to leave a comment below with your opinions, questions, or experiences related to the topics covered. We are here to continue the dialogue and to share further content that can enrich your path of growth and awareness. Thanks again and see you next time.